Hi, I'm Matt Williams and welcome to Soil Lab. Today we're going to be doing a follow-up to our initial gypsum video. If you haven't had a chance to see that video, check it out here or in the link below. In that video, we really did a visual representation or demonstration of how gypsum or calcium sulfate can bring soil particles together. We called that flocculation. In doing that, it also displaces sodium, which is one of the main reasons we would apply gypsum. And in today's video, we're going to back that up with data. Well, the first question we need to answer is, where does this sodium come from? Well, if you get your soil test results back and you're high in sodium, it can come from a lot of places. If you've watched our bagged garden soils video, you can see that it can even come from that soil that you're adding to your garden. Now, when we have high sodium levels, that can lead to poor water absorption by your plants or direct toxicity that looks like leaf scorching around the edges. That's especially true in our salt sensitive crops like strawberries, beans, and onions. So what can we do to move that sodium off of those soil particles, off of those organic particles, and out of the root zone? Well, we can add gypsum. Today's data is gonna back that up. So with sodium coming into our soil from so many areas, it's important to know what tool we have available to kick that sodium off and move it out of the root zone. And that tool that we're gonna to discuss today is the gypsum. So what was the process that we used to conduct this study? Well, the very first thing we had to do was to find a sodic soil. We ended up using the same soil that we used in our initial gypsum video. In that video, I mentioned that we found it just west of where we live. Well, we found it adjacent to an actual bee bed. In our region, we have these really unique pollinators called alkali bees. And our alfalfa seed growers in the region cultivate these bee beds for the native pollinators to pollinate their alfalfa so that they can harvest the seed and sell it globally. So we have a really unique native species in the alkali bee and really unique soil conditions because of that. So adjacent to one of those bee beds is where I collected this very high sodium, also known as sodic, soil. Um, and you'll see we saw in the ballpark of a thousand parts per million plus of sodium in these samples. So we found our sodic soil. After we found our sodic soil, we came back to the lab. We measured out equal amounts of sodic soil for both of our cones or filter cups. We then mixed gypsum with one of those soils and we left the other one untreated. Well, how much gypsum did we use? We used what would be the equivalent of about 16 pounds of gypsum per 100 square feet. If you think in terms of per thousand square feet, that's about 161 pounds of gypsum per thousand square feet or about three and a half tons per acre. Does that sound like a lot? It, it should. Um, that's a lot of gypsum to apply. And so if we were doing this full reclamation rate, which is what we were mimicking here, this would be done pre-plant incorporated. Well, maybe you have high sodium and established turf or more of a permaculture garden. What rates would we use then when these 16 pounds or 161 pounds is just too much? Well, I would use about one fourth of that rate and I would apply it twice per year and just continue to monitor through time. So we can still add gypsum, displace sodium and enhance the nutritive value of our crops or enhance the health of our turf with lower rates used regularly. So what we did is we collected the same soil that we used in the gypsum study. So this is a sodic soil and we measured out equal amounts um, of that soil. Now you see those here. We measured these equal amounts out to be pretty representative of a pre-plant lawn or a pre-plant garden. Um, that's really the idea behind this study. And the amount of gypsum that we're going to use was 3.58 grams, which really isn't that meaningful to you right now. What's that equivalent to? Well, with this amount of soil that we have here in each of these, again, the same amount, this amount of gypsum is equivalent to about 16 pounds of gypsum per 100 square feet or right around 161 pounds per thousand square feet for those of you that think in terms of thousands of square feet and on an acre scale this is 3.5 tons per acre so it's a full reclamation rate so what are we going to do um, to show that this gypsum or the calcium in the gypsum in particular does displace the sodium well 
We're gonna do a little pour over experiment here, just like you might, uh, might have done this morning with your coffee. We're gonna take these filter cones. We're gonna add our filters to them. A nice natural fiber filter. And then we're going to be mixing the gypsum with one of our soils, and we're gonna leave the other soil alone. We're going to be pulling a soil sample out of each of these filter cones after we leach them with deionized water. And we're also gonna analyze the, uh, the leachate or the water that moves through the root zone, just like that water would be moving through the root zone in your lawn or garden. So let's go ahead and start by incorporating our gypsum just as you would do pre-plant in the lawn or the garden. So we're gonna just surface apply that gypsum, making sure not to spill any outside of there. Set that aside, and we're gonna go ahead and incorporate that. If I was doing this in the lawn or the garden, you know, the depth of reclamation ideally would be six inches. Um, we'd try to incorporate that gypsum as best as we could into the top six inches of soil, which is fairly representative of the root zone of many of our garden crops and uh, many of our turf grasses as well. Of course, if we're irrigating and fertilizing appropriately, we can drive roots a bit deeper than that. By the time those roots get to that depth, however, those more mature plants can be a bit more or are a bit more tolerant of, uh, of sodium. It's the young plants and those seedlings that are germinating that are very, very um, sodium sensitive. So now that we have our gypsum incorporated, we're gonna go ahead and add our gypsum soil mixture to this filter. And we're gonna add our soil that's salt affected or sodic with no gypsum to this filter. So what we're gonna start off with is adding 20 milliliters of water to each of these just to get them to a field moist, uh, to a field moist level. And then we're gonna add 80 milliliters of water uh, to each. Again, that's deionized water with a near neutral pH, maybe just slightly acidic. And we're gonna leach that through. So I'll start with the 20 mils of DI water here. And we're gonna add that to our gypsum added soil. We're gonna take another 20 mils and add it to this soil. And we're just letting those moisten for a moment here. Next, I have 80 mils of water, and now we're gonna be doing the leaching. And so the idea here, again, if this was your lawn or your garden, is you have prepared your seed bed, you've added the gypsum and incorporated it, further preparing your seed bed. Now we need to leach through the root zone to allow the calcium to displace the sodium, and then the sodium should leach through. When we're doing this experiment, we're just being sure not to um, allow any soil above the level of the cone so that it doesn't leach down over the edges. And with these volumes, that's not a problem at all. So there goes our 80 mils there. That's gonna take a moment to start leaching through. And while we're waiting for that one to start, we'll measure out our other 80 mils and add it to what's functionally our control, our sodic soil. Now. A lot of times, you see there wasn't um, very good structural units here, getting the water to percolate can just be a little bit of an exercise in patience, and that's what we're gonna do now, is we are going to be patient, allow that to leach through, and then when we come back, we'll have leachate, and we'll be taking our soil samples to analyze um, from each, from the gypsum added and our control, which is just a sodic soil. So we're still gonna continue to allow these to leach for a little while. I wanna be sure there's no standing water 
on top of um, on top of our soil surface to be sure it's all moved through. So right now you're probably noticing a difference in the color of the leachate or the water that's coming through the root zone if you will. In the soil with the gypsum added you see the leachate is really clear whereas in the sodic soil where we did not add gypsum it's pretty cloudy. Um, obviously that's probably not because of soil particles then. So my question to you is why is the leachate clear in the one with gypsum and dirty in the one without? Leave a comment below and let us know why you think there's a difference in the color of the leachate. So now that we've allowed some time for both the non-gypsum and the gypsum uh, soils to leach through the root zone, just like that water would have leached through the root zone in the garden or the lawn, now it's time to do some sampling. So we're gonna start off with a standard sample jar and I'm going to add an ion exchange resin capsule to that sample jar. Now what comes next? We're gonna go ahead and add the soil and our deionized water in the appropriate volumes. Okay, that's one nice level scoop and we're gonna go ahead and just add that to our jar with the ion exchange resin capsule. Now that we've got our soil in there, we need to add another 20 mils of deionized water to ensure maximum adsorption uh, of all these elements. And that's just perfect. We'll go ahead and cap that sample off. All right, so now we have our ion exchange resin capsule added to our sample jar and we have our scoop. We just need to get one level scoop just as we did in the untreated control. Remember this one is the uh, sample where we added gypsum. So again, one nice level scoop and we'll be adding that to our sample jar. Right, just as we did before, now we're gonna top that off with 20 milliliters of deionized water. All right, so now we're at the last part of this demonstration. And so what, now we can discard our filters and the soils. We can move our cones to the side. And what we're gonna do is measure out 50 milliliters of the treated and of the untreated soil solution. And we're gonna add those in with an ion exchange resin capsule as well. Now just like the soil, that capsule is going to be adsorbing cations and anions from this solution as well. Alright, now we can do the same for our untreated soil. Go ahead and add our ion exchange resin capsule and 50 milliliters. of the leachate. This is going to give us a really good look at the difference in color between the two. And if you haven't already, go ahead and comment below and tell us why you think there's a difference in the color between the treated with gypsum and the untreated soils. All right, so why did we just capture that leachate? So imagine this is that soil that was in the cones that you saw earlier. We added gypsum to this one and nothing to this one. Well, when we add gypsum and then leach that water through, what we would expect is that the calcium and the gypsum would kick sodium off of exchange sites, and then that would move through in, with the water into that leached fraction. 
So in theory, we should have less sodium here than when we started, and we should capture that sodium in the leachate. We won't see that same phenomenon on this side because there was no calcium to displace the sodium. Now, as we look at this study and the results, we found just that. In the soil that had no gypsum added, when we soil tested that, the soil test came back with nearly 800 parts per million of so sodium still in that soil. Well, some did leach, as you see here. We still leached about 300 parts per million of sodium. Now, that was the sodium that was already in solution and not adsorbed to our soil particles or our organic particles. When we added gypsum, it was pretty surprising or exciting, really, to see that the chemistry actually worked for us. So in the gypsum added study, that calcium was able to kick a lot of the sodium off of the exchange sites and we were able to leach a large fraction of that. Well over 700 of the over 1,000 parts per million were moved out of the root zone when we added gypsum. Now, it's not to say that this gypsum got rid of all the sodium. It certainly didn't. It got rid of nearly all of it while we left about 270 parts per million in that root zone. That calcium displaced a large portion of the sodium and it moved out of the root zone and we captured that in our leachate, removing well over 70% of that sodium from the root zone of our plants. Now, would I like to see my parts per million of sodium below that? I certainly would, and that's where repeat applications can come in, especially if you're top dressing with gypsum. So what's the takeaway here? If you have high sodium, whether that's from your bagged garden soil, whether that's from the parent material, what your soil's made of, or from some ice melter amendments that you've added, you can displace that sodium from exchange sites and leach it out of your root zone using gypsum at reasonable rates. Hopefully you found this a great follow-up to our last gypsum video. You learned something. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, feel free to share, and follow along for more content. I'll look forward to seeing you in the lab again soon.